Hey guys, Paul Rick here. Welcome back to another edition of the Baseball Dad Show. Another mini episode of the Baseball Dad Show. Your feedback on these shows has been just completely overwhelming and awesome. So uh, we're going to continue to bring you more of these shorter shows. And it's actually kind of cool because I can do a lot of Q&A in these, um, you know, a little bit quicker than a normal podcast. So in today's show, we're going to talk about what do you do when your son is forced to pick a position. So um, this is inspired by a phone call I had with a dad. Um, whose son is kind of in the situation of having to pick between being a pitcher and a catcher. So we're going to get into that in a second. Before we do, make sure you head on over to BaseballDadShow.com. We have a ton of stuff over there for you. We have um, a scorecard where you can see if your son is has what it takes to play at the next level or should he play up. There's also a word-for-word cut-and-paste dialogue you can use to ask your son's coach for more playing time. Um, and also... Um, a, a bunch of other stuff are there. If you want to set up a call with me, you can do that there. So head on over to baseballdadshow.com. So it happens all the time. And it usually happens, um, you know, 13, 14, moving into high school where now, you know, most kids play multiple positions when they're kids. So you might have a kid who pitches and plays short or pitches and plays center or plays center and short. And they, you know, they play infield or outfield and they kind of move around. Sometimes as the team needs or as pitching changes are made, especially with teams now that carry, I mean, rosters of 10, 11 players. Like it's not uncommon for a kid to pitch one game, play short another another game, and then um, because the shortstop is pitching, and then the next game um, a different kid is pitching, the kid who pitched is now back at short, and then that kid is playing center field, right? And when we get on these these uh, travel ball tournament teams. Um, I think with 10, 11 kids on a roster, kids are really talented. You know, kids are, kids are, are, you know, genetically, um, you know, they're growing genetically faster than, than most kids and they're talented. So, you know, it's not a huge deal for a kid to play first base one game and play short the next or center field or left field or right field. But when you get the higher levels of baseball, um, it can be more difficult. It's, it's um, much more rare for a kid to, play multiple positions in high school. Now, obviously the clearest one is like they pitch and play another position. So what happens when your son is caught in the, in the, in the, in the predicament of saying, am I going to remain like a full-time pitcher or am I going to play be a position player or am I going to pick the infield or am I going to pick the outfield? And I mean, let's be honest, you know, there are certainly programs where, the path you go down can predict how you're coached and kind of how you're viewed and how you're labeled. So if a, if a kid decides to become a pitcher and the focus is that mostly pitchers um, focus just on pitching and don't play the field, that's certainly something to take into consideration. If he's going to focus on playing a position and not spend as much time as a pitcher, certainly another thing to take into consideration. So how do we do this? I have a, I have a different take on it than maybe <coughs> – Excuse me. I'm, I'm battling allergies and this time of the year, so I'm going to cough a little bit and I'll apologize. We'll try and edit out as much as we can. Um, but I, I take a different approach on it than most people do, because usually this comes about when a kid is entering high school. So I think this is the perfect time to help your son start to make decisions on his own and then have to live kind of with the consequences of those decisions. Your role as a dad should be to make sure he has all the information that he needs to make the right decision. And he understands that whatever decision he's going to make, he is going to live with. So, um, and this is exactly what I advised this dad to do, who who certainly, um, you know, great guy and, and, you know, wanted to help his son make the best decision. Um, And I've given this advice to lots of dads over the years. You need to spend um, at least a week helping your son identify the pros and the cons. So the worst thing to do is sit down and say, well, let's list, let's list all the pros and cons. And you'll spend a few minutes doing that and you'll list, you know, all the pros and cons that are on the top of your mind that you're like consciously thinking about. And what happens over the next couple of days is you'll start to think deeply about it. Your mind will kind of relax about it. And all of a sudden, you'll start thinking about some different things that you didn't remember that were pros and cons. So my suggestion is, however you keep notes, whether you keep a notepad, a journal, or digital note-taking of some sort, I would open up a file or have a page. I do it on on like a yellow legal pad. And on the top of that page, I would put pros and cons of 
pitching versus, you know, concentrating on playing the field. And I would keep that open for about seven days. And you could even do this independently of your son or with your son. You know, it's fine. Um, and just let that kind of, as you think of things, add it to the list. You will find that your first list will have four or five, six items. And then you will start to add things as you go. And once you have that list of pros and cons, all, your only job as a dad is to review that list of pros and cons. And then according to the values of your family, um, explain to him, this is, if you make this decision, here are the, you know, the things you have to live with, or here are the rules of making that decision. In other words, if you decide that you're going to do this, you're going to commit to this team, you're going to play this position, and then we will revisit it at the end of the season. So you're making a commitment, whatever decision you make, you kind of can't go back on it. So part of the things that I would, I would look to, um, yeah, I would consider is, you know, first of all, what is the player passionate about? Um, you know, where the passion is, is usually going to be where the drive is and where the work, where the work is, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so where's the passion now? I'm also a realist. I also know that every position we're passionate about, we can't play on higher levels. If that were the case, everybody would play center field, shortstop, and pitch, and bat third or fourth, right? So that's just not the way the world works. So, but start with the passion. So, like, which position are you passionate about? Great. Now, another thing to consider is, you know, what's the development look like? You know, is it is it um, moving to a position that you have to develop a little bit more? Is it a position that you already have, like, a, you know, a good handle on or, or mastery of? Um, would be another one. Number two is, you know, playing time. Right. Um, are, are, are you going to be OK if you focus on just being a pitcher? Are you going to be OK not being in the everyday lineup maybe as much as normal? Um, if you're going to not be a pitcher and you're be a position player, are you OK? Maybe not going to the mound and not having the time to develop your pitching as much as someone who would concentrate on pitching would be. Another thing to consider is what are the players that are on your team or in your league or whatever you're playing? What does that look like ahead of you? So if you are, let's say you're a freshman entering high school and there's a sophomore, you know, second baseman and he's awesome and it looks like he's going to start varsity. Are you OK kind of maybe playing behind him? Um, so these are all things that you should consider. And and then when you have all these things laid out, a couple of things will happen. Usually the right choice kind of naturally appears, you know. I almost say it's almost like a magic trick where the, the magician makes the card rise out of the deck. You know, it's almost like the, the, the right answer will kind of rise out of the deck and, and it'll, it will be very clear to you. Um, or, you know, there's going to be um, that you might need to ask someone else for advice as well. Um, and that's very that's that's more rare. Usually the right choice kind of appears. But if you do, if you get to this and you're like, you know what, I really don't know. I, have, I think one of the best things you could do is solicit um, unbiased third party advice from someone who will give you, give you that advice. And I would start the conversation with, look, can I count on you for the truth? And maybe you're going to ask another parent or you're going to ask another coach, or maybe somebody that is familiar with your son that understands the game of baseball and the situation he's in. They say, look, can I count on you for the truth? Um, we're trying to make a decision and here's what we got and here's where we are. And we just, we're just really not sure. We could kind of see it go both ways. Um, what should we do? So, um, those would be the steps that I would take. But ultimately, look, dads, I'm going to tell you this. Start as early as you can. And, and when you feel he's mature, mature enough, to start making decisions on his own. So, because I'll, I'll tell you this. I will talk to a dad at some point in the next two, three weeks, guaranteed, where the kid was pushed down a certain path to pitch or play a position, and it didn't work out. And, and the kid now blames and resents or is angry with the dad. So if he, if you provide him with all the information and he makes a decision, your job as a dad is complete. And if he makes the wrong decision, look, he learns a lesson. Simple as that. You know, so if we go back to really the, the crux of all, everything we do here at Baseball Dad Podcast is go back to that 23 funnel. We want a healthy, productive, mature, self-assured so, uh, you know, um, young man with self-esteem at the age of 23. And that might mean looking at decisions and learning from making a bad decision. So that will wrap us up for today. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, again, go over to baseballdadshow.com. A lot of cool stuff over there for you. A bunch of free downloads. And if you want to set up a time to talk to me like this dad did, um, you can. No strings attached. 
um, just my way of just thanking you guys for being awesome in this baseball dads community. So, uh, and if you guys have any questions that you want us to answer in these kind of mini podcasts, um, please shoot them over. You can email me at five, six, seven pitcher at gmail.com. You can also contact me through baseball dad show.com. All right, guys, have a great week and I'll see you next week. Thanks.